Well, good Monday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day out there. Um, a little message for the Eagle fans. You know how much I love you guys. Fuck them birds. Fly, Eagles, fly. Now we shoot those birds out of the sky. Stupid dumbasses managed to give up a third and 30 to my sexy arm. Pathetic defense and team. No wonder I own those piece of shit frauds every damn year. Don't get me started on the fans. You boo me while I earned a respected award. Losing the Super Bowl was just karma for you fuckheads. I can't wait to drop 100 on your heads next season while being the daddy of the NFC East again. Yeah, it's like that. So, you know, I, I have a lot of great uh, followers out there and friends and things like that, you know, from all kinds, all different sides of the fence and things, Eagle fans and Washington fans and uh, Giant fans and stuff. Lord knows I got one Giant fan that's living in my house right now. Um, interesting that AJ um, sent me this. Now, I'm not sure if AJ is a Dallas Cowboy fan. I mean. Or now, I guess now I'm looking at his his Twitter thing. It's it's actually the Lincoln Financial Field picture is in there. So AJ is definitely an Eagles fan out there, and he tweeted uh, or sent me a, a Twitter message out there and said, "Not every Eagle fan thinks this division is going to be easy. Cowboys are good." I I, I almost shout out to you, AJ. AJ, I appreciate you, bro. And he sent me this clip here of Greg Castell and I want to play this because I'm 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 mystified at this. Dallas is 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 real, you know, it's getting back to your initial point, Jeff. Dallas is, does not really have a significant weakness. You know, where you go, "Oh my god, that's that's really bad." I mean, mm-hmm. obviously we talked about what their offense will look like. We don't know the answer to that. As much as I like Mozzie Smith, he's still a rookie. We don't know how many snaps he's going to play every game. We don't know the answer to that question. Um, you know, Defensively, um, you know, at, at linebacker, you know, Damon Clark, I think, is going to be the guy. Played well last year, but now if he's the full-time starter, we'll see. We'll see if they continue to play big nickel as their base. You know, they have more linebackers now. So there's questions here. Right. Um, but I don't think they have a defined weakness where you say, man, they can't compete with the Eagles. Wow. They must not be listening to Philly 500. They, they cannot be listening to Philly 500 because Philly 500, he's already told you that this is the reckoning for the Dallas Cowboys, that Dak Prescott sucks, that the Cowboys, you know, can't do anything right, and that the Eagles are literally the best team everywhere, every position out there. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. They, they are the team to beat but here it is one of their own talking about mm, you know pump the brakes a little bit the cowboys don't really have a weakness they don't have a spot where they say they can't compete so you know that's actually kind of interesting and and quite honestly here's the problem with the nfl season and we sit here 59 days, four hours, 35 minutes away from kickoff uh, of the season. We're a little over two weeks, two weeks and two days to training camp opening up. And we'll definitely be talking more about this tonight at 9 o'clock during our live stream. The thing is, is you don't know what you don't know. You know, everything is only on paper, and very rarely is what's on paper ended up being what actually happens. There's always going to be teams that you don't think about that are going to be good. That, you know, maybe they were the fourth place team because, I, I, quite frankly, in 2017, nobody thought that the Eagles were going to be the Super Bowl champions. They were fourth in the division, they were in fourth in the division the year before. They go from worst to first and end up being in the Super Bowl and winning their very first one. So there's always going to be teams that come around that you don't expect. Half the teams that were playoff teams the year before 
aren't the next year. You can look at the Rams, who won the Super Bowl, were ass-ass after winning the Super Bowl and didn't even have a winning record. So there's so many things that you look at. You know, you don't know if if last year was lightning in a bottle for the Eagles. They're fighting against, you know, knowing that no team, you know, usually a team that goes to the Super Bowl and loses doesn't go back the next year, much less a team that wins the division in the NFC East wins it back-to-back since they did back in 2002, 2003, and 2004 when everybody in the NFC East was ass-ass. The division is good. You've got the Giants that are definitely improved. Daniel Jones had a better year last year and got paid. You know, they are a team that has a great defense again. The Commanders, well, they've got hope now. Dan Snyder has left the building. Sam Howe has a much better arm than um, any of the guys they've had in a while. He's still, you know, a late-round draft pick, but, you know, he might bring some stability, actually, to the team. And the fact that they now have hope that Dan Snyder is gone, you may see a totally different Washington Commanders team. And then there's the Cowboys who, with Dak Prescott, you know, he's done pretty good against the Eagles. Let's be clear here. That's, you know, you can say a lot of things about Dak Prescott, but failing against the Eagles is not typically one of those things you can say. And so with all of these things going against them and then a killer schedule, they literally go, they play Miami, the Commanders, the Cowboys, have a bye week, and then they got Kansas City, uh, Bills, 49ers, then Cowboys, Seattle's in there. And then the Giants, they literally have seven games in a row where they're playing playoff teams from the year before. And if you really want to be seven games, um, eight of nine games in a row with teams that were in the playoffs before. So, you know, this whole thing of Dak Prescott sucks and the Eagles are great. Well, it's nice to actually see that there are some people out there that say, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't sleep on the Cowboys. Maybe they actually have built a pretty good team quietly. It's not been all the big free agent signings that get all the hype and stuff like that. The Cowboys have done really good in free agency quietly. When you think of a guy like J. Ron Curse, you know, guys like that, a guy like Dante Fowler, um, guys that are playing significant time for the Cowboys in significant roles, but don't cost a whole lot. And if that holds true, that I, and I believe it will, you may see a guy like Ronald Jones end up being a key cog in the machine of the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll see what we're going to see, but I'm, I'm really surprised. AJ, I appreciate you bringing that to me. Um, and uh, appreciate you being a follower of the, the channel and not being one of the evil trolls that usually hang out here on my channel. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. Peace.